Right, Wayne Copping is coming through in a couple of moments. And, uh, well, you know what? Let's go straight to Wayne Copping right now. Wayne Copping, good afternoon. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. How's it, Steve? How's it, Sasha? So great to be here again. You know, every time we release a film, we end up here. So I think we should just build this into our, our <laughs> well, film rollout. The thing know? is, we need, we, need to, we need to deal with these things straight away. And um, what better way to do it than to have you in with us and, 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 and telling us about it. Thank you first so much. Hand, first hand. I, I mean, I've watched it a few times. And um, let's just give the, the listeners an idea of what we're talking about. I put it out on social media. Hopefully, people Thank have you. been uh, watching it on YouTube. It, um, this is your third film, correct? Your, your so, so this is technically it's an online film. It's right. 14 and a half minutes. Yeah. It's short. And I've I got to tell you, the response has actually surprised us immensely. Yeah. Um, in five days, we have over a million views between YouTube and Facebook. Wow. On this film alone, we're sitting at like 1.2 well, million. Well, I think about views. one and a half million of those are from my share. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I have no doubt. I, I have no doubt. So, and um, just tell tell the listeners who you are, because okay. some people may not know okay. um, who All you right. are, where you've been, what you've done. Okay. So look, I'm a South African boy. I'm a I'm a filmmaker, um, but most of the work that I do, most of the films that I do, are either based um, on stories related to Israel, right. Um, or related to radical Islamic extremism. Right. Now, we've wanted to make this short film for a long time, and it just so happens that this is one of the main issues that happens to have entered into the American presidential race. Yeah. And that is this, the, this question of um, how many Muslims are radical. This yeah. issue falls into the refugee issue. This issue falls into the Palestinian issue. It falls into almost anything that any of us are doing at any given time. Yeah. Um, and so we all know that there's such a thing as radical extremism, uh, but how many Muslims are radical? Yeah. Many of us know Muslim people, and they're not yes. radical. And yes. we get on with them, great, and we work with them. And yet we look on the news and we, and we see these things. Um, and then we, we look at some of the polls, and that's what, what this film does. And so the, the question is, how many Muslims are radical? Now, it's a very difficult topic to discuss. Um, and also, how do you define radical and how do you parse it out? So what we actually did was we found an incredible, or we've worked with an incredible Muslim woman. Her name is Raheel Raza. Right. She's yeah. a Sunni Muslim. She was born in Pakistan. She's a Muslim human rights activist. She's American now, right? She's based in Canada. Based in Canada. Actually, okay. it's, not, it's not her fault, but she's still awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm yeah, kidding. Yeah. She's awesome. She, she's, she's based in Canada. And um, she has been trying to raise the alarm about radical Islam for many, many, many years. How come we haven't heard of her? She's I mean, she, been in some of our, our, uh, our other films, right. like Honor Diaries. Um, she's written extensively, um, but I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot yeah. more from her in, in the months. Well, you've certainly highlighted in your film. Yeah, yeah. and she's, she is really well known in Canada. And so she tells the story. She helps break down this uh, question of how many Muslims are radical. The other thing that, that the film does, and this dovetails into the way Raheel delivers it, is... Often the issue of radical Islam is divided between the liberals and the conservatives. Yes. Broadly speaking, the liberals want to say that Islam is a religion of peace, and they want to say that the conservatives, the Republicans, you know, the so-called right-wingers, they want to say that Islam is a religion of death and destruction. So yes. that's kind of like how it plays out. Now, neither of those extremes is true. Correct. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, there has to be nuance in this argument. And what actually happened was there was, as you may have recalled at the time, there was a fascinating interchange between Ben Affleck, you know, the yes, famous course, actor yeah, and filmmaker, yeah. between him and Bill Maher on Bill Maher's TV show and, and Sam Harris, who's, I uh, saw that, yeah. who's he's an American thinker and a neuroscience, uh, and, and he's, he's an amazing guy. So there was a whole discussion between the three of those people, and Sam Harris actually had an incredible way of breaking down the the radical Islamist world. Yes. He, broke, he broke it down into three worlds. And right. that's what Raheel does through the course of this film. She looks at the way Sam Harris breaks it down between the violent jihadists and the first, let's call it the first concentric circle. And yes. then outside of that, he explains there are Islamists. And then outside of that, he explains that there are what we call fundamentalists. Right. Yeah. And we look at each of those circles. And Rahil Raza defines for us what each of those circles are and how many people are in each of those circles. Yes, and the yes. way that she does it is she uses the pupil right. to 
to, to explain it all. Okay. If you just joined us, I'm talking to Wayne Copping. He is the producer, director, director, director of um, By the Numbers, The Untold Story of Muslim Opinions and Demographics. You can check it out on YouTube or else you can go to, can we go to the clarionproject.org? Yeah, clarionproject.org forward slash numbers. Forward slash numbers. And you can check out, it's a 15 minute docudrama, I would say. <laughs> what did you call it? A documentary. It's a documentary. It's, it, it's a documentary. It's an info. It's, it, it's, a, it's a talk. It's a presentation. Yeah. It's an eye-opening experience, yeah. Yeah. really. And it's, what's interesting about it, because, I mean, from my perspective, I deal with this every day. It's just part of what I do. And I'm, I'm finding it, I'm, I'm torn in my outlook towards Muslims. I'll mm-hmm. say that mm-hmm. live on air. Mm-hmm. I'm torn mm-hmm. because I see, I see there's a good and there's a bad. Mm-hmm. And we can't blame Islam for it. Mm-hmm. But... The overwhelming feeling in the world is that something has to be said. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that's what this does. Your thoughts on that? <laughs> I, was, I was engaged in, a, in an online discussion yesterday. Um, they were asking me, you know, is Islam responsible for the terrorism? Like, they were basically saying, is Islam, is Islam a violent, oppressive religion? Right. And what I was trying to say was, I don't think that the text of the Quran causes people to kill any more than guns cause people to kill the responsibility rests with the people that um, interpret those verses right in the same way as the responsibility rests with those who actually fire the gun correct and and i I don't think that that we we should take responsibility away from the people and say oh they've been brainwashed by their religion every human being has the ability to make cogent rational decisions not only based on how their religious framework, but also understanding the greater religious framework or the greater intellectual framework of the world. And so what the way that I look at it is that radical Muslims will translate and interpret their religious texts in a radical way. Let me just sure, interject it for sure. a second. We, we're talking about the same Quran. There's not one Quran for fundamentalists or, or, or jihadists and one right. Quran for, for moderate people. And is right. it... You know, it's, we're talking about interpretation, right. and it says the same thing. It says there are some pretty vile things and pretty divisive and racist and, and uh, uh, violent things. It, it's, that is true, and that's with, with, without question. And it can speak about you know, killing the infidel, and it can talk about beheading uh, individuals. It can talk about fighting and killing for the, on, for the honor of, and, of Allah. And killing the Jews specifically. Right. But now, if we look in the Torah, this is Jewish radio stations, we yeah. can speak about the Absolutely. Torah. We have yeah. a mitzvah. To kill Amalek, right? So we have a you know a mitzvah, an eye for an eye. Yes. So how do we interpret those verses? If we were radical, we could say this person is Amalek, mm. and therefore we have a mitzvah from the Torah to kill him. Yes. But we don't do that. But this is the, exactly the point: is that I had this discussion with a rabbi, and you know I had some online texting, and we had some to mm-hmm. and fro, and. Uh, a chap, I think his name was Abraham. He said to me, "Listen, I can quote you stuff from the Torah, from the Talmud, from the whatever right. that says X, Y, and Z about about non-Jews." It's and you know what? He's right. Right. Exactly. The stuff is there, but what is the difference in the way we interpret it and the way some people interpret the Quran? Right. So, it's easy to to understand that the violent jihadists and yeah. Islamists and many fundamentalists have politicized their document. And right. in fact, in some, in some cases, they've even weaponized it. Yes. They, they use their holy text as a way to get people to do things that they otherwise probably wouldn't or shouldn't. Right. And the degree to which any particular Muslim would be violent or an extremist, an extremist is the degree to which he's going to interpret those verses in violent and radical ways. Yeah. And part of what we do in, in, in By the Numbers is we don't want to get into a situation where we're whitewashing all Muslims because that's ridiculous it and is, it's absurd yeah. and it's stupid and it's, like, it's beyond all of us to do that's that. That's what Ben Affleck was reacting to. Correct. But the thing is when Sam, Sam Smith, I think his name was? Sam Harris. Sam Harris. When Sam Harris gave him some numbers, right. he kept stum. Right. And it was, was difficult for Ben Affleck at the time to assimilate these numbers and to try to assimilate how large of a population, you know, like one number. I, I, I'll give you, you give one some two, numbers. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you one or two data points that Rahil Raza, this um, a, a Muslim uh, host of this show, of this uh, documentary. She, 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 you know, President Obama says that um 99.9 percent of muslims do not agree with the extremists that's yes. pretty much what he says yes so she asked the, the question is it true that 99.9 percent of muslims in the world don't agree with the extremists and so the film goes through many numbers the one of which which i find telling is the the pew uh, research 
center looked they polled muslims 18 to 29 so yeah. these are young muslims in western countries we're yes. talking about america britain france germany and so they asked them do you believe that suicide bombings against non-muslims can be justified yeah right so in america 26 percent of young muslims that's 20 uh, that's a quarter of young muslims in america said that in certain certain circumstances suicide bombings against non-muslims is, is justified is permissible yeah. yeah and it is and is permissible and we have 42 percent of french muslims and 35 percent of british muslims that's that's on a, on a very key violent question um another data point that Rahil raza brings out is they ask how many muslims uh sub will support stoning spouses yeah. if they are unfaithful it could right. be men or women yes you have a, someone has an affair well so how, uh, hardly men don't get stoned for adultery surely it has it has been known to happen it has, it has been known to happen okay. it's harder to prove but it has been known to happen so the way it works out is of the muslims that were surveyed these yeah. were thousands of muslims in 39 countries with face-to-face -face interviews 51 percent roughly of those muslims who believe that they want sharia law yeah uh, now, of that 51%, there was, right, 51% of Muslims believed that Sharia law and stoning should be, should be uh, permissible. In other words, there was 50% of Muslims want Sharia law, and 50% of those people believe yes. that, that spouses who've had an affair right. should be stoned. Okay. Now, that's, that's radical. And it's that alarming. Works out, it's that alarming. Works out to, that we worked that out to over 289 million Muslims around the world believe that. 289 million. And, and we, we don't make this point too clearly in our, in our film because of time, but this is just that number, the 289 million who yes. believe that, yes. those are only in the countries that were surveyed. Right. This doesn't include countries like Saudi Arabia right. and Syria. And Iran, where they couldn't do those surveys. Yes, of course. And so the number is actually much higher. So we have hundreds of millions of Muslims that believe in uh, stoning, that believe apostates should be executed, that uh, the hands of thieves should be amputated, yeah. and so on and so forth. And so, and so we end up with hundreds of millions of Muslims that, that, that believe these things. Does that make mean it, it's all? Of course, it's not all. Yeah. But we have to understand that when you know Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama or someone tries to say that it's it's a religion of peace, we have to try and put a little asterisk on it to say yes, the people that practice it like a religion of peace. Yeah. For them, it is a religion of peace. But what's interesting about that, you you say, I mean, this is the political correctness of the Obama administration. In fact, of most Western governments, they don't want to uh, alienate people and upset mm -hmm. people based mm -hmm. on, on on these issues. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. But there's a reality factor here, and unfortunately. The radicals are not doing Islam a favor in any way. Right. Um, Islam itself is suffering as a result of this. And sure. you, there are people that are speaking out. Right. For example, your your well, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and she's almost, it, it feels like she would be shouting against an enormous force yeah. that's not hearing. Yeah. In terms of, I mean, her, she must have had enormous problems and threats and that kind of yeah. thing. She has suffered many, many death threats. Yeah. What she's been trying to do, her and many other individuals like Zudi Jasser and um, Asra Namani and many others, they are trying to reform the religion from the inside. They're, they're trying to bring into the reading and the understanding of the Quran what we would call the nonviolent, the non extreme, the, the more, uh, let's call it, 21st century way to understand yeah. life, love, liberty, and right. justice and peace for all. Yeah. Um, and, and to answer your point about the liberals and political correctness is they think that they're doing them a favor by protecting the Muslim community but they're being in denial about this yeah. isn't helping any of us either being in denial about an issue isn't going to make it go away and I think what we want people to walk away from this film with is is to not say that all Muslims are radical yeah is to actually when we show the numbers and the way Rahil Raza presents it is you actually understand that not all Muslims are radical and yeah. not all Muslims are terrorists um, but you, you start to have a more nuanced approach and really what we're trying to do is be able to start this conversation that we haven't been able to have without people shouting us down because of political correctness what makes people anxious right. and so we we're trying to do this in a respectful way that's just using the data from the world's most recognized uh, study, the Pew study. Yeah. In terms of feedback, you said you've received enormous feedback. You've had well over a million, million and a half views. Yeah. What 
in terms of the quality of feedback, what has it been like? Have you had a lot of negative, positive? What is yeah, it? So it's, this has actually been fascinating because, as you many of you know, there's a, a new feature on Facebook where you can. Act, it says, you know, 37,000 people are discussing this. So even yes. people that you aren't following, if they've shared this particular yes. video, you can actually see what they're saying. Right. And I've been incredibly pleasantly surprised at the high level of debate that's been going on on many, 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 many people's feeds. Yes. Where people are trying to bring a level of intellectual honesty to this discussion. Yeah. I've seen very, very, very rarely where people say, kill all the Muslims or anything like that, which yeah. you sometimes see on YouTube comments and things like that. People are really trying to understand this because this... This is probably the single most important issue facing the world today. Yes. You could say that climate change is important, and of course it's important. But if Iran or Pakistan let off a few nukes, yeah. right, that's not going to be great for the environment. We're not going to have a world <laughs> to really <laughs> well, worry about exactly. unless, we, yeah. unless we get a grip yes. on this. Right. And, and, the, and the thing about radical Islamic terrorism is that we can't allow this to go off of our radar. Uh, you know, the United States won't allow... 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 Syrian refugees, um, they have no way of vetting no, these of in individuals. Yeah. And even it turns out that the individuals that were responsible for the San Bernardino attack, that they did come in and Department of Homeland Security did vet them. And they had no idea who these people actually were. That they didn't they actually, check the Facebook post, though. They, they didn't <laughs> check the Facebook. They didn't know that they were actually radicalized before they came into, into, into yeah. the United States. So, so, so the point is we have to re recognize this as the number one most important issue facing us today yeah. because it filters yeah. into every aspect of our lives. I mean, yeah. yesterday in Los Angeles, they shut down I yes. don't know how many schools because there was a bomb threat. Yeah. Um, all of us have to not be hysterical, but we have to take proactive steps and get real with this issue. And most importantly, and this I think answers part of your question earlier, most importantly, we have to empower the true moderate Muslims because they are the ones that are going to be responsible for helping their communities change from the inside. But what it feels like is that if they are, and I, I'm, I'm, yet, I'm yet to meet mm -hmm. people that are mm -hmm. prepared to stand up, and it takes a lot of guts to do that sure because does. I think they're under pressure as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. from within inside. Mm -hmm. um, if there are people that believe that this is ridiculous and crazy and that they are being cast into this molten pot of, of, of vitriol, yeah. why are they not standing up? They are standing up. It's very difficult for them to stand up, as you point out. Yeah. Um, here in South Africa, one of our local heroes, Hussein Solomon. Um, he, yes, Hussein Solomon. He yeah. stood up um, against uh, amazing threats and pressure. And, and so what we have to do, um, not, just, uh, not, not even the Jewish community, I mean the community at large, yes. we need to empower these people to have bigger voices. We need to give them bigger microphones. We need to protect them. And, and when, once people can see that they are protected and that they're going to be protected by the people around them, maybe more and more Muslims will feel comfortable to speak up and, and, and stand out. And I think that this change is happening. Yeah. And when people do stand up, they, we have to protect them. And part of what this film does, uh, by the numbers, is we give people tools to try and ascertain, is this person just saying the right thing or is this person... A radical, or is he an Islamist, or is he a fundamentalist? And the you questions know you can ask, yeah, simple yeah. questions that, that you can ask, like, do you believe that Sharia law should rule the world, and so yeah. on and so forth, and you can understand it. If you've just joined us, I'm talking to Wayne Copping. We're talking about his new film, By the Numbers, The Untold Story of Muslim Opinions and Demographics. And you can check this out on YouTube, and of course, you can also go to theclarionproject.org and uh, check out forward slash numbers. 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 And uh, this is a 15 minute. Um, Info package, info bombshell that will give you a, give you an idea of how other people see this issue that we talk about all the time, and I talk about a great deal. And I was surprised to a great extent about the numbers. I thought I was being conservative, but it's actually a lot more than I thought. So, if you have any questions, the text line is three four five one nine. Um, you can also email on air at highfm dot com. We'll be back after this. High Drive with Steve Marks. 101.9 High FM. It is 50 minutes after four, after 3 o'clock, 10 to go to 4 o'clock. I've got Wayne Copping in the studio with me, and he's agreed to stay a little bit longer. Thank you very much. Uh, by the numbers, his movie, By the Numbers, The Untold Story of Muslim Opinions and Demographics, a fantastic, very important film that you need to watch. I've checked. I've uh, f shared it on the High Drive with Steve Marks Facebook page. It's available there. You can find it on YouTube, By the Numbers. You can find it at theclarionproject.org forward slash numbers. Wayne, thanks so much. It's a very, very important discussion, and that is the message I've picked up right from the beginning. Is this your, your, uh, your the narrator Rahil Raza talks about this being an important message, and 
I should, couldn't reiterate that enough, that people need to hear that. It's an important thing that, that the world needs to hear this message. And it's coming from a woman who understands the religion of Islam. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's lived it. <clears throat> Pardon me. She's lived it. She's seen it from the inside. Part of what her day job actually is, yeah. is helping women in the Islamic world who suffer abuse or suffer uh, honor killings yeah. or attempted honor killings yeah. and, and things like that. So she really is at, at the coal face. But I think in my work um, with many Muslims like Rahil Raza and Zuli Jasser and many other courageous individuals is what this has kind of taught me is to not judge every single Muslim who you don't know. You see a Muslim on the street to prejudge a particular Muslim in a particular way. Yeah. Um, I think we don't know what's inside people's hearts. And so what I try to do is, is I try to do as we say in Hebrew, to judge each person favorably. In other words, I will approach each person that I meet um, as if he or she isn't yes. radical uh, unless there is a reason to suspect that he or she is. Yeah. And then once there's reason to suspect that he or she is, we can't allow ourselves to be so politically correct that, that we're in denial and we actually be betray our own values. And then you need to behave and act accordingly and take. But this is a, I mean, it's a typical Jewish way that isn't to look at look at this kind of thing. I don't know whether other people see it like that often. I, am I am I being selectively uh, it, biased? <laughs> it, it it may be that as a Jewish value, but I do think that judging favorably can help anyone to yes, have a happier life. Because if we if if we immediately think the worst of any particular person. Our, our minds can go to who knows where. So you might see a Muslim woman who's wearing a burqa, and you might think, ah, she's harboring terrorists in her backyard. And, 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 yeah. and mean, meanwhile, she could be running an orphanage in her home, and she Absolutely. could be preaching and teaching a kind of Islam that is just pure beauty and, and peace. We <laughs> don't know what's, what's in their hearts, even by the way that they dress. Absolutely, yeah, correct. Uh, but if you ask a few, few questions, where do you stand on Israel? Where do you stand on Sharia? Where do you stand on this? And a few, a few of those questions, you can get a sense of who they are. And, I find uh, that the conversation usually falls by the wayside as soon as you mention Israel. It's, it's something that apparently is, is pervasive. It could be. It, 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 it could be. But uh, it's still a conversation that needs to be, needs to be had. Um, your, your we need to know who, who it is that we're dealing with, and there are ways that, that, that you can figure that out. Right, yeah. I suppose it is it's by giving people a chance. And it's, as you say, your thoughts on Islamophobia. You're not Islamic, I understand that. But the, this, this is a concept that is, is spoken about a great deal. And there are lots of NGOs and people that talk about Islamophobia. Right. So what's, what's Islamophobia? A phobia is an irrational fear of a particular thing. Yeah. There's nothing irrational about the fear of Islam, or, or the way that Islam seems to be portrayed by the Islamists or by the fundamentalists, uh, there's nothing irrational about that. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, we have this fight or flight gene so yes. that we can be fearful of things. Um, but what we can't do, Islamophobia tends to, and this is exactly what speaks to what we're talking about, Islamophobia tries to put all Muslims into one basket. Yes. And what we're trying to say is no. You can't put all Muslims into one basket. There are different strata, different ways of understanding it, and get that understanding, and that's what this particular film is about. Yeah. So there's nothing irrational about being concerned about this, and there's nothing Islamophobic about saying we should be very careful about who we allow into our country, which refugees we do or don't allow into our countries, yeah. because there really are reasons to be worried. There really and that's, be, and that's the thing, and I've, I've, tr I've tried to, to discuss this, because although there is a humanitarian crisis, this we right. know, Right. But there is also a threat and a, and a, and a real threat that countries are facing. Y your thoughts on the refugee issues? It's, it's a humanitarian crisis unlike we've seen for many, many, many years. Yeah. People unfairly compare it to the Jews leaving Europe and I've have, had been, this discussion, have been yeah. unable to, to find refuge. And I yeah. think it's an unfair comparison. Um, but there are many ways that these refugees can be helped. Um, but... One of the ways that we shouldn't do it is just to throw open the gates because we've seen in places like Sweden and yeah. Germany where they have, look, even if these individuals are not radical, the, the situations that they find themselves in yeah. um, make them prime targets for the radicals. So if they're not radicals when they come in, yeah. they certainly can be radicalized by by those forces and those those groups that will take them under their wing when they come into the country and they're vulnerable and they don't have money and they're susceptible and so there are many other ways that we need to be more creative in the ways that we help them it's setting up places either in the arab world or in other That's places another to, question. To, 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 to 
to give them a safe place and how and housing and dignity most important Absolutely. To give them the dignity yeah. why are the arab world not taking in refugees well that's that's interesting and thank you for bringing that up saudi arabia and qatar and the five rich, well, most wealthy arab countries have refused to allow even a single muslim refugee and that's in. not based on shiite muslim i mean no, shiite no, or no, sunni no no like the you know that's they saying they will not allow a single one in because and they say it because they are afraid of terrorism that's interesting so are they Islamophobic are they being unfair <laughs> are they just being practical but Saudi Arabia are amazing they gave 200 million dollars to to help them and then they build, they're building 200 mosques in Germany so <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, so, so now Sa yeah. Saudi Arabia is done you know like they well they, they just like want to bother the problem away they, they, they want to bother the problem away but yeah. they, they're not actually helping and so um, it's partly our responsibility to help but it's also it's a good point It's the Arab world's responsibility to actually help solve this issue. I've got a text coming through from Martin Z saying the Rambam wrote that since Islam follows the seven Noahide commandments it is a kosher religion although he wrote at the time when radical Islam was not killing innocent people. Yeah I mean we, we know that a Jew can pray inside a mosque yeah right we believe in the same God yeah, it's, it's a monotheistic it's a monotheist, monotheistic religion. religion I need yeah. some more coffee here. <laughs> um, it's just the way it's practiced yeah, uh, yeah. We, we have to be aware of the fact that it's not all unicorns and rainbows in terms of the international western altruism that seems to be the politically correct way of dealing with the refugee issue is that not going to be the west's demise I mean, it's a broad and, and a large question but when you when you take into context what you said about the arab countries that are not taking them in flatly saying no because they understand the threats and yet the west are saying, hang on a second, we can't let these people yeah. suffer. Thinkers like Mark Stein are raising the red flag not only about violent concerns, but about the changing face of Europe. And uh, Germany actually has a declining birth rate. And so if they, they want to bring in 250,000, uh, 300,000 uh, 300, Muslim refugees, because Germany actually need young people for the years ahead. Yes. And so what Mark Stein is saying is that don't be naive and think that these young Muslims are going to become nice German citizens wearing, you know, eating schnitzel and <laughs> wearing strudel vines. And they won't but, be drinking but, but beer. Yeah, yeah. They won't be drinking beer. He, he's saying that they're going to be bringing with them a, a different kind of a culture that is not going to be German. Yes. And that's what the Germans don't seem to understand. And I think a Angela Merkel was just named Time Person of the Year. Yeah. The liberal world see what she's doing as amazing. Yes. But um, we're not li living in a liberal fantasy the the, de the European demographic will change such that the face of Europe will change. Um, but isn't that isn't just what you're saying the the start or the or the the, the part of the the, the uh, demographic jihadism or the what do they call it the uh, societal jihadism that is right. in fact happening in in a, in a less vi in a not a violent way. Right. I'm talking about a so in in a shorter version of of the film by the numbers. Uh, we had to cut it down a lot. Rahil Raza was saying that she is a Muslim immigrant. And she and her family have actually been a very productive and positive uh, mem uh, 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 contribution yes. to their country. Yes. Not to say that Muslims cannot be. Of course the degree not, yeah. to which they ascribe to European, Western, modern, liberal values is the, the degree to which the Syrian refugees can be yes. uh, a, con a massive contributing factor to their country. Right. But uh, history shows that that is not necessarily the case. And so unless Germany is more successful in integrating them into their society and these yeah. Muslims become, let's say, they become German, right. um, Europe Which, faces a big, a, big, a big challenge. This is the thing is that there seems to be a reticence to assimilate and to, to become right. German, French, it, uh, Italian, right. American, Canadian. Right. I understand that. Right. Is there a space, do you think, going forward for safe, non-jihadist, non-physically violent jihadist communities within the West? There, there have to be, because that's our only hope. The yeah. people like the Rahil Razas, those people net, need to get to those refugees, and they need to educate those kids before the radicals do. Right. And that's the challenge for Angela Merkel and Germany and Europe. Um, the, the name Mohammed, yeah. for many years running, is the most popular baby boy's name in Great Britain. I think Britain. every Muslim male, first name is Mohammed anyway. Right. So, yeah. But the point is, like, that's the most popular boy's name in, in Great world. Britain. And in, in Great Britain. Okay. So in other words... Are those Mohammeds going to become British Mohammeds, or are they going to 
become radicalized Muhammad. And well, the Anjum Chaudhrys is, is one side which we don't want to look at. Right, and but they they very strong. Um, yeah. And so we need to strengthen those moderate Muslims that can teach those kids and the next generation and say, you can have an amazing life. You can still be a Muslim. You can practice. You can pray five times a day. Keep the five pillars of faith right. and still be a European Muslim, and that's and that's our hope. And as long as we're not blind to the reality, we can actually eventually make that happen. And that's that's our only hope, I think. When we run out of time, we could talk for another five hours, <laughs> I'm sure. But thank you so much for coming in. Thank any, you, any final words? Um, I just want to say thank you to you to you guys. I, I'm a such a big fan of your radio station and the work that you do. And uh, I just want to give you a bracha that you just carry on going and going from strength to strength yourself, Sasha, Kathy and the entire crew. So oh man, thank, thank you, you so guys. much Wayne thanks so much, it was Wayne Copping, we were talking about his new film, By the Numbers, you can check it out on YouTube, this is the untold story of Muslim opinions and demographics, check it out you will be surprised, right it's four, just after four, Sasha Star has news